the history of DHEA supplementation in women with low functional ovarian reserve at CHR uh, is a patient-driven history because uh, the person who initiated our now 12 year long research in this arena was a patient. Uh, it was a, a time of her presentation, woman in her 40s, she was I think 42 and a half years old or so, who presented to us uh, and she was found to have very low functional ovarian reserve, indeed so low that I recommended to her she go into egg donation. She insisted on trying and in her first cycle she produced only one egg. Now she also wanted to freeze her embryos uh, because she wasn't ready socially to, to be pregnant yet at that time. So we froze that embryo and uh, she and I had another conversation and I told her this really doesn't make any sense. And she begged and begged and said, give me one more chance. And so I said, okay, one more, but if it's again only one, that will be it. Well, in the next cycle, she produced three beautiful eggs and three beautiful embryos. And so we could no longer refuse her. And this woman, who was well off, was very well educated, she was a lawyer and a banker, she then went month after month, and every month she produced more eggs and more embryos. And we were kind of scratching our heads what was going on after six cycles. She was already 43 at that point, and this was roughly 12 years ago. 43 in those years was quite ancient. She one day came smiling into my office and said, Dr. Gleich, I have to tell you a little secret. And the secret she told me was that after the first cycle, when I had told her that she would have at best one more cycle, uh, she had gone to the medical literature. And she had found a number of papers which uh, had recommended different treatments to improve egg numbers. And she chose DHEA because it was the only one which was available over the counter in the US and she therefore didn't have to tell us. And so suddenly we understood here at CHR that what we had been observing, this constant increase month after month in her egg numbers and embryo numbers, may have something to do with her taking this DHA. And she continued even beyond six cycles. And she continued getting better to such a degree, actually, that uh, I don't remember if it was the 10th or 11th cycle, uh, we had to take her medication dosage down because she developed typical ovaries that looked like polycystic ovaries, like polycystic ovary syndrome, which you usually see only in young women. So that observation with that one patient, which we then published, led us into starting to investigate DHEA.